Welcome to the second part of solving trig equations. Here we're going to solve some more trig equations, but we're going to ratchet up the challenge just a little bit. Okay, just a recap here on what it is that you're trying to do whenever you solve trig equations. So remember, when you solve an algebraic equation, you want to get the x by itself. But when it's a trig equation, you want to get the trig expression by itself. You want to get the sine by itself or the cosine, whatever. Sometimes what that means is that you're going to have to factor. You'll have to get everything on one side and then factor that side and then apply that zero product property, set each of those factors equal to zero. Solve it just like you would a polynomial equation. Once you get an answer, once you get one of the angles, and you get that by working backwards, we have something like sine x equals a half. We're looking for the angle measurement that gives us the ratio a half best way to find that is on the unit circle. Okay, so we find one of the angle measurements. But there's an infinite number of answers, so we just take all the coterminal angles from that. To get all the coterminal angles, once we find one, we just add the period to it. Okay, there's still more angles from that. To get the other set of angles, we're going to use the unit circle again and find out where on the unit circle that something is equal to the same ratio. So for example, that one where we said sine is equal to a half, sine is the y-coordinate, that would be something like pi over 6. That's the one your calculator would give you. And then you can just get coterminal angles from that. But the one your calculator won't give you is the obtuse one, which is 5 pi over 6. That would be the other one, and then, of course, you'd take coterminal angles of that by just adding 2 pi, multiples of 2 pi. All right, so in this presentation, you're going to have uh, a whole bunch of different strategies, and, and we're going to cover different kinds of exercises that uh, take these into account. Like, here's some things that you can try. Maybe getting everything on one side of the equation and factoring. Maybe you have to convert everything. Uh, into one single trig expression. Maybe get them all tangents or all sines or all cosines. Or maybe you have to do it in a mixture of sines and cosines. And, and we, we've done all of these things before whenever we were simplifying trig expressions and, and verifying trig expressions. So all of those things come into play. Sometimes you got to get a common denominator. And, and maybe you don't even know that you have to get a common denominator because something like um, tangent secant. Those things are already, I don't know why that says sect, but anyway, yeah, pretend it says secant. Those things are already fractions, right? Because that's sine over cosine, and this is 1 over cosine. Um, sometimes you have to square both sides. And you'll see the interesting things that happen there. Sometimes whenever we go to solve, we have our trig expression isolated, but uh, the ratio is not on the unit circle. So in that case, we have to use the inverses, the arc sine, the arc cosine, the arc, arc sine, arc tangent, yeah. Um, and then take the coterminal angles of that. And then finally, we have dealing with multiple angles. So here, instead of having sine x, maybe we have sine 2x, sine 3x, or whatever, and however that we have to deal with those. So all that coming up.